Hey guys, Michael Sanchez here with Danny. Hey. So Danny, did you have a good vacation? I did. It was really fun. Awesome. So we're getting back into the swing of things today. Right. And I'm going to teach you all the fundamentals that there are on the violin. Okay. So we actually have a violin checklist you guys can get access to just by emailing me at michael at superiorviolins.com. And we're basically going to be going through the checklist and actually giving you guys tips on uh, each of those and exactly how to work on them. So I'm going to pull up the checklist right now. And we're going to sort of go through it. So there's basically different categories I have. Uh, and when you guys are practicing, what I recommend is that you sort of focus in on one category at a time when you're working on violin fundamentals. The first one is good posture leads to good technique. Right. So we got to make sure we have good posture. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So the first one is keeping your back straight. So when you're playing the violin, we want to make sure our back is nice and straight. We don't want to be slouched over this way or this way. So right. very important. Next one, using a shoulder rest. So Danny, you have a shoulder rest. It's very important when you play the violin that you use a shoulder rest. Uh, what's even more important is that we make sure that we keep our violin on our shoulder and we're basically able to play with no hands. Right. Because uh, actually I was seeing this earlier, you were sort of relying a little bit on your left hand to hold the instrument. Yeah. So can you hold it with no hands? I think so. Very good, and that's uh, what a shoulder rest helps with. Uh, next, very important when you're playing the violin to keep the violin level. So um, very important to sort of keep it up. So your back straight, violin level, very important. Very good. Next one, the violin should be about at a 45 degree angle. So Danny, when you're playing, your shoulder should be about square to the music stand. Okay. And then you want to point the left side of the scroll at the left side of the stand. So go ahead and set up. So this should be pointing at the left side of your music stand. So this would be incorrect to have it way off in left field, right? Like that. Yeah. Remember that? Uh, the reason for that is that if you're at the tip, it makes it sort of awkward um, to have your arm relaxed. So yeah. go ahead and get to the tip of the bow. You'll notice that Danny's arm is sort of relaxed, but let's put the violin way off to left field. Now it's sort of awkward to get to the tip, isn't it? Yeah. Very good. Awesome. So that's sort of the first category. So being that you've been playing uh, five years plus, you really probably have a lot of that stuff down, except I didn't notice earlier you sort of were grabbing onto it a little tight. Yeah. So well, we want to work on that. Right. All right. The next part of the checklist I want to go over with you guys is good instrument setup leads to great tone. Yes. The first one is, is the violin in tune? Yeah. So the violin's in tune. want to make sure that before you guys start playing. Very good. If you guys don't have a tuner, I highly recommend, say, on your smartphones, you guys can get what's called the INS Tuner Lite. That's a right. good app. Yes. Um, but anyways, you guys can make sure you're in tune. Very important. Uh, next, the bow tightened properly. So is our bow tightened properly right now? Looks good. Yep. Basically, what, what we want is that when you play the violin, you don't want the bow hair to actually hit the stick. Uh, we also don't want a big gap in between the bow hair and the stick. So go ahead and set up, like play on the D string for me. Good. Did you notice there was a little bit of a gap between the stick and the hair? Go ahead and play again, see if you can notice that little gap. Good. Yes. So we could actually loosen the bow a little bit. Okay. So do you want to do that? Uh, Lucy, Lucy Goosey, <laughs> left, lefty Lucy. <laughs> okay. You loosen your bow, okay. Looks good. Much better. All right, next one is, is there enough rosin on your bow? So we take the back of the finger, you're trained very well. We take a look at how much rosin is on the back of the finger. So just a little bit, you can actually use a little bit more, right? Yeah. I don't know if you have your rosin around, but uh, that's okay. Uh, you have enough to, to get you by for right now. Right. But eventually you guys should make sure that when you're playing the violin that you have enough rosin on your bow, very important. Okay, so we've gone through two categories. Let's go to category number three which is good left hand technique leads to great melodies. Right. So we've worked a lot on that left hand. The first one is, are the knuckles up? How many times since we've uh, taken lessons have I said knuckles up? Thousand at least? At least. 10,000 maybe, <laughs> Probably. okay. So you gotta keep those knuckles up. So a lot of students when they play, they have sort of flatter knuckles. Uh, it's really important to get them up. Uh, just the adjustment would be to go from here, right Danny? Right. And then we're trying to get to here, so we're trying to make that nice adjustment to get yeah. the knuckles up. And that's actually one of your biggest things I was saying earlier for you to work on. So that's uh, very important with that first finger to keep that knuckle as high as possible. Yes. Very good. Next one is, are your angles back? So what do you know about angles back? You have to keep your fingers like when you're not, you have to keep your knuckles up, but um, you can't keep your knuckles like angled forward, like towards yourself, but they have to be angled backwards because 
it'll be easier to play. Yep, and it's really easy as you press down to sort of overpress, and that causes those angles to sort of change from this position to sort of mm, more of this position with that too much pressure. So really important to sort of have light touch. Yeah, definitely. Good. All right, next one is fingers on the tips. So do you have those fingers on the very tips? Are you using the very edge of the, the finger right before the, the nail? Just to make sure that you don't have to press as hard. Good. Very nice. And uh, one that's really challenging is the fourth finger. Can you press down properly with the fourth finger? Good. Very nice. All right, next one, hand still. So keeping your left hand still um, helps your finger speed efficiency. So a lot of students, when they play, they sort of overpress. They're using too much of their hand to press. So we want just those fingers to be working. So that allows us to play fast. Yes. Can you play something fast? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so <was> that's <laughs> able because of those fingers moving by themselves. Very good. All right, next one is keeping fingers close. Uh, that's the next thing on the checklist. So by the way, I'm going through my violin technique checklist. You guys get access to this by emailing me at Michael at superiorviolins.com. I figured you'd probably know that by now, so yeah. I say it all the time. Um, so fingers close, having your fingers close to the fingerboard helps uh, to find notes quickly. Yeah. So, so when we play, do we want to have our fingers way up here in, in outer space, or do you want to have them close? You want to have them close so that you're ready to play. Yep, mm -hmm. because if your fingers go way out in outer space, it makes it that much harder to find the intonation. Yeah. Very good. So go ahead and uh, put down your um, your first finger on the D string. Okay, I see your fingers are nice and close. Very good. Now show me what it would look like if it was not close. Oh yeah, that would be hard to play, wouldn't it? That'd be challenging. Very good. All right, uh, next one I have down is hitting half steps and whole steps. So um, obviously it's important to hit those notes in tune. So um, your fingers are pretty close for a half step, aren't they? Yeah. Let me, let me take a look. Yep, good, so second and third finger, go ahead and do, put those together, good. So it's important to sort of understand, um, as a player, some people with bigger hands, they have a really, really tight half step to where they're almost overlapping. Yeah. But if you have really small hands, sort of thin fingers, then your fingers might just have a little bit of a space. So it's important to sort of understand that, right? Right. So for you, it's sort of nice and comfortable. Spaced out. Yeah. Yep, and that's an important thing with the violin being fretless. Yes. Right, do you play guitar? No. Okay. My brother does. Oh, okay. See, I, I like that concept of like, you know, you put your finger anywhere between a fret and it makes the same sound, right? Yeah. Violin's a little harder than that, isn't it? Yeah. You gotta have it just perfect, just that perfection. Right. So, do you guys play together, you and your brother? Uh, not really, no. He doesn't really want to. No? Oh, man. You guys gotta play like by, by bonfire, you know, hang out and that, that's not cool, is it? Um, not to, not to Eventually. Play. Yeah. Eventually. When you guys get older, it'll be cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've hit quite a few things here. Um, so the next section is talking about right hands. So let's get into that. All right. So right hand, um, shoulder relaxed. Keeping your shoulder relaxed helps to prevent bow bounce. Yes. So when we play, we definitely shouldn't be bowing like this, right? We should be extending the arm out and bending the wrist. Right. Let's take a look. So you're doing that. I didn't notice earlier when you were playing on the E string, you were sort of doing it a little bit. Right. So we want that extension and then bending coming up. Take a look. Let's take a look on the E string. Good. So our E string elbow should be right at the side as much as possible. Uh, it's very easy for students to have their elbow sort of out here when they're playing on the E string. So right. try to tuck that in. Okay. All right. Uh, I actually just mentioned extending the arm. The next one is wrist bending slash level. I sort of mentioned that. So many students don't bend their wrist as they come up bow. They sort of keep it stiff. So let's take a look at your wrist as it bends coming up bow. Nice. Nice. So we're going from this position to this position, back and forth. Very good. Yes. All right. So minimal arm movement. I sort of covered that. And then pivoting the elbow to change strings. Um, so go ahead and change strings. We go from like a D string to the A string for me, Danny. Good, so you've been trained well. Your elbow is moving down for A string, coming up for D. Even with, an, even with the instrument on D string, just below the instrument on A, at your side E, right. and then above the instrument on G. Yeah. Very good. All right, um, we're getting through these really well. We only have two sections left, or maybe one. Two sections, okay. 
A uh, good right hand technique leads to clean sound. So should we have our thumb curve in the, in the bow hold? Yes, but we can't, have, we can't have it facing this way, we have to have it like. Yep, very good point. So I see all the time students, they sort of have their thumb position like this instead of like this. So try to adjust that if you're doing that. And then stiffening the thumb is what I call banana thumb. Right, <laughs> right? snowflake thinks so. Yeah, we have our little mm -hmm. snowflake uh, doll face kitten over here. I'm sure you guys will see her in a little bit. She might jump up. So, all you guys know her, of course. <laughs> very good. Okay, so um, thumb curve, very important, right, Danny? How about pinky curves? Yes, gotta keep it curved. I have a little. Oh, yeah, you have a little pinky uh, thing. <laughs> so, these are actually, what are these called? Do you remember? I have no idea. I wanna say bow mate, but um, there's different tools that sort of help the bow grip. This is one of them. This actually allows us to sort of have a, a marker of where we put the pinky, and then keeping the pinky curved is really important, right? Right. All the time I see this, stiff pinkies. And it's kind of weird, because when I take it off, I can't, like, I can't go, like, I can't play without it, really. So used to it? I'm so used to it, yeah. So. Kind of like holding my pinky there. Yeah, but we used to have it out in sort of thin air, so now it's much better. So yes. Very good. All right, the next point is uh, bow hand fingers on an angle. So I see all the time students sort of have their bow hold like this yeah. instead of having it on an angle, right? And part of that is related to the index finger. So where should your index finger be on the stick? Right. Um, About here? Yeah. Yep. So if your index is more here, this sort of causes bow, ten bow hand tension, makes your bow bounce, makes things sort of harder, more challenging. So try to make sure that your index finger is here, like that. And then all the fingers nice and curved right over the stick. Very good. All right, so the next one is uh, loose grip. So when we grab the bow, should we grab it like this? No. Or relaxed? Relaxed. Relaxed. So just as that is, if you were to take your hand and just let it drop, the way my hand is sort of natural right now, that's exactly how I want to have it as far as holding the bow. Let's take a look at your bow hold. Okay. Looks good. Your thumb's curved, your index finger looks good, pinky's curved on the stick, very nice. Cool, a lot of very important things. And by the way, like I mentioned earlier for you guys, what I recommend is sort of working on one of these sections at a time. So I wouldn't expect you guys to go through all of this in one practice session. So I'm probably filling your brain with all this stuff, like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm technically going through all the fundamentals of the violin right now for, for you guys out there, so everybody's at a different point. Right. Uh, but technically, we have gone through all these at some point. Yeah. So it's not like it's all new stuff. <laughs> that would be really overwhelming for a beginner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do this, do that. All right. Um, so the next one, we're almost there. Knuckles on top of the stick. We sort of talked about that. Um, using the index finger. So very important to kind of move that index finger as you're playing, right? Yeah. So so many students sort of um, rely on the arm to move the bow, but it needs to be moved from the index. So let's take a look at just some bow strokes. <laughs> Yep, so you were using that index finger. Nice. Thank you. All right, this is the last section. So we got a couple minutes left and we're all done. Whew. Yep, I bet we have lots of viewers out there. If you want to say hi to the audience out there, they're all watching. and they, I'm sure they love watching you play. Probably. So, I can see why. No, how long, oh, yeah, yeah. How long, how long have you been technically been playing? Uh, let's see. I was in second grade when yep. I started. So. Yep, you were seven. I still remember the days. <laughs> That was fun. That was. Yep. Um, now you're 13? Yeah, so it's okay, crazy. I was like crazy. seven. Mine six years. Yep. Yeah, six. We took a year off, so we're trying to get you back on track. Exactly. So, so, so like five years. Five years. Okay, this is the last five points. So the first one is bow speed consistent. So we don't want our bow speed to sort of be ragged. I see all the time students when they play, they sort of stop their bow and then they sort of start up again, and that makes it really hard to start up cleanly. So. Yeah. Try to, as you're playing, keep the bow flow moving. Keep it always um, going, unless you actually right. have a staccato. Exactly. Good. Uh, light transitions. So just exactly what we're doing with the index. Keep it nice and relaxed. Sort mm -hmm. of using that. Yep. Um, oh, getting to the tip. You're like a pro at this. <laughs> so get to the tip. Good. So the tip of the bow is right here. When you're practicing your scales, really important to get to the very tip as much as possible. And also just in general with your violin music, it's very important to use the whole bow as much as you can. All right, uh, keeping the bow here straight, a lot of students sort of tilt their bow when they play. Uh, technically, that's not the best thing to do as a beginner. Yeah. So it's really important to sort of keep your bow hairs on the strings, mm -hmm. right? 
All right, last one, relaxed hold at the tip. So, so many students as they bow, they get to the tip, and then when they're sort of bringing the bow away from them, they sort of grab the bow harder. And that's a really bad habit, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, that's going to make it start, you're almost poking, it's okay. That's <laughs> kidding. Sorry. No, it's okay. I just was like, oh. Um, so, yeah, making sure that your bow holds relaxed at the tip. Okay. Good. One drill you guys can do that's really, really helpful is what I call the rocking bow drill. So um, you guys probably are gonna be able to do this a lot easier here. Um, take your elbow from the E string elbow up to the G string elbow and try not to make a sound. So I don't want this sound. Okay, but it's much harder to do at the tip. That means that I have proper muscles working in my hand. Try that. Okay. This one I want you to work on this week, by the way. Okay. Oh, oh boy. Oh, we got some rust in there. Oh boy. All right, we're using some of that arm. I remember yeah. you used to do that with, with, without any, any I know, sound. It's about a long you, gotta, time. you gotta do some practicing. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, you're doing well. All right, try it at the tip. I bet that's gonna be even harder. That's where you guys might really struggle. That's tough, isn't it? Try to um, have your arm go all the way down to your side and then all the way up. It's hard. And use that index to sort of clamp the bow on the strings as well. Okay. All right, I've exposed some stuff. Very good. That's good. You're doing well. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this class. We went over everything on my violin technique checklist. If you guys are interested in getting the checklist, you can email me at michael at superiorviolins.com. And I would love to send it to you. And, um, yeah, Danny's um, coming every week. We have been uh, we took a little break there, but yeah. we're getting back into it. Uh, we're preparing a duet for you guys, so they'll be debuting very soon. So yes. as long as you practice. I will. All right. So anything you want to say to the viewers out there? Have a good day. Have a good day. And you're going to practice your basketball this week? Yeah, you're an awesome player. So Thank you. I, actually, I want to play with you. We should do a Facebook Live of us playing basketball. You could school me. If you want to lose. Ah, I probably will. <laughs> have a good day, guys.